Hello everyone, welcome to Midi Cuisine. Today we are going to talk about seizure and epilepsy. So today's topic is seizure and epilepsy. Seizure by definition is a proxismal event due to abnormally discharging neurons in the brain. What is meant by proxismal which occurs suddenly all at once. So this is a proxismal event which is due to abnormally discharging neurons in the brain. So this event may be in the different forms, maybe in the form of sudden loss of consciousness, maybe in the form of abnormal body movements, maybe in the form of psychic symptoms like sudden emotional change, anxiety, fear or deja vu, which is, which is a feeling of familiarity. What is mean by deja vu? This is a psychiatry topic but let's have a look into it. Deja vu is a French word which means already seen. This is actually an illusion of memory in which a person thinks in which a person thinks that he or she has been through the present time in which he or she is living currently before. So these symptoms are due to involvement of, of the high cortical areas these psychic symptoms, these are due to involvement of the high cortical areas during a seizure activity. This event may be in the form of autonomic symptoms like profuse sweating, erection, or pupillary changes. This event may be in the form of a muscle twitching even. Now what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is an idiopathic seizure disorder. It involves recurrent seizures due to some unknown chronic underlying process. The word idiopathic means when the cause is unknown. When the cause is unknown. So there is a cause but unknown to us. So idiopathic seizure disorder. Therefore seizures in an epileptic patient are said to be unprovoked because the cause is unknown to us we said the seizures which which occur in an epileptic patient they are unprovoked when there is a known cause of a seizure we said the seizure is provoked but in epilepsy the seizures are said to be unprovoked because there is no known cause to provoke the seizure Every person has got 5% risk of experiencing an isolated seizure during his or her entire lifetime. Remember, having a seizure doesn't necessarily mean you have epilepsy. It is the recurrent and unprovoked seizures that make the person epileptic. So, for epilepsy, remember these two words, recurrent, unprovoked seizures, recurrent, unprovoked seizures. Unprovoked, there is no cause known to cause the seizure activity. The idiopathic seizure disorder. According to the latest version of this concept regarding epilepsy, if a person has a single seizure with a very high chance of recurrence, then this person will be also called epileptic. If a person has a single seizure, if a person has a single seizure with a very high chance of recurrence, this person may be also called epileptic because we said earlier, few seconds ago, they, that for, for the diagnosis of epilepsy, you should, you should have more than one seizure, recurrent seizures, which are recurrent seizures. But the never concept, but the never concept says that if a person has a single seizure, with a very high chance of recurrence, he or she will be also called epileptic. Remember, most of the time, seizure is associated with loss of consciousness, so it becomes difficult to differentiate it from syncope. Syncope, which is also called fainting, when there is sudden loss of consciousness due to many different causes like cardiac causes, the neurological causes, so how will you differentiate seizure from syncope? In seizure, 
like it is post ectal symptoms the symptoms that occur after the seizure activity like confusion disorientation drowsiness etc and these post ectal symptoms are absent and syncope the second thing is the recovery of consciousness in seizure takes some time like minutes while in syncope there is fast recovery from unconsciousness to conscious state the third feature through which we differentiate seizure from syncope is the seizure is usually associated with abnormal behaviors like tongue biting urinary incontinence there is also a fourth feature which i have not written here because i forget it now remember seizure has post ectal symptoms also seizure has an aura the symptoms that occur before the seizure activity which is also absent in syncope so seizure has aura seizure may have aura and seizure is often accompanied by the post ectal symptoms so there may be aura and there are post ectal symptoms and syncope has none of them moving on to the pathophysiology of seizure it is due to abnormal spontaneous discharge of neurons in the brain resulting from the imbalance between excitation and inhibition so neurons have excitatory signals and inhibitory signals and when there is imbalance between these excitatory and inhibitory signals the neurons start discharging by their own so which causes the persons to seize now let's talk about the different causes of seizure the causes of seizures can be remembered by the acronym vitamins v for vascular causes like stroke like intracerebral bleed like av malformation i for infection like meningitis encephalitis t for trauma a for autoimmune conditions like cns vasculitis m for metabolic causes the famous hypos hyponatremia hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia hypoglycemia hypoxia remember hypokalemia doesn't causes you to seize hypokalemia can cause arrhythmia but doesn't cause seizure i for idiopathic n for neoplasm and s for like a vague way to represent psychiatric now remember along with all these causes drug overdose like drug toxicity and drug withdrawal when a when a when a person is chronically on a drug like cocaine abuser like amphetamine abuser when we withdraw this drug so what are the drugs that cause the person to seize when they are overdosed it includes cocaine amphetamines ethanol fenzacridine and what are the drugs which cause the persons to seize when they are withdrawn the bzs benzodiazepines and alcohol remember alcohol is present both hair and hair because the toxicity of alcohol also causes seizure and withdrawal of alcohol also causes seizure now let's talk about the different causes of seizures there are two main causes of seizures one is partial seizure one is generalized seizure so let's talk about partial seizure first partial seizure is a seizure which involve the discrete portions of the brain only only certain portions of the brain are involved in case of partial seizure the symptoms include jerking of a finger or hand chewing lips making or even tingling or numbness of the face so when a discrete portion of the brain is involved the discrete part of the body will seize there are further two types of partial seizure simple partial when there is no associated loss of consciousness 
and complex partial when there is associated change in consciousness level of the person. Remember the partial seizures occur alone or as a part of syndromes like benign Rolandic epilepsy. This is an epileptic syndrome like temporal lobe epilepsy. So let's talk about benign Rolandic epilepsy. This is the most common form of childhood epilepsy. This is actually a focal seizure disorder. Focal seizure disorder occurring from 6 to 10 years of age. So it actually manifests between 6 to 10 years of age. The seizures have their origin near the fissure of Rolando and the brain. It is thought to be a genetic disorder with about 25% patients having family history of some type of epilepsy. Classically presents with twitching, numbness or tingling of the child's face or tongue. So the classical presentation of benign Rolandic epilepsy is twitching, numbness or tingling of the child's face or tongue may interfere with speech of the child and cause drooling of saliva. Benign Rolandic epilepsy is associated with classical EEG pattern, the centrotemporal sharp waves. Therefore, this benign Rolandic epilepsy is also called Becht's benign epilepsy with centrotemporal sharp waves. Remember, when you treat benign Rolandic epilepsy and it becomes disappear, the reoccurrence rate is very common. The remission is very common. It reoccurs in children. Now have a look at temporal lobe epilepsy. Temporal lobe is the most common site for focal seizures. Remember we are discussing partial seizures, the focal seizures. So the two syndromes, the two epileptic syndromes associated with partial seizures or focal seizures are benign Rolandic epilepsy and temporal lobe epilepsy. These are the two syndromes where there are focal seizures, where there are partial seizures. Temporal lobe epilepsy is due to mesial temporal sclerosis, mesial temporal sclerosis and it causes complex partial seizures. What is complex partial seizure? Where there is change of consciousness level and there is change of consciousness level and it typically presents with hand movements like pecking, fidgeting or face movements like chewing, lip smacking. And along with these movements, there is impaired consciousness. Don't forget that. Because in temporal lobe epilepsy, there is complex partial seizures. Now let's talk about generalized seizure, the second type of seizure. When seizure involve both the cerebral hemispheres, then it is called generalized seizure. Remember, when there is partial seizure, and it gets converted to generalized seizure. This is called partial seizure with secondary generalization. Secondary generalization of partial seizure. Now, the types of generalized seizure are very important. The types of generalized seizure. So, let's have a look into different types of generalized seizure. The first type is Epson seizures, also called petit mal seizure. There is sudden brief loss of consciousness without loss of postural tone. Remember, in Epson seizure, there is no loss of postural tone. So they, the patient doesn't fall down. When there is no loss of postural tone, when the postural tone is maintained, the patient doesn't fall down, causing the patient to stare into space for few seconds. Epson seizures 
are common in children as compared to adults and they occur as part of a syndrome called childhood absence epilepsy. This syndrome starts between ages 4 to 6 and shows up as brief staring episodes in children. Occurs many times a day. 60% of children with this syndrome outgrow these seizures in their teenage especially if medicines work well. Those who don't outgrow these seizures might have seizures into adulthood but medicines can help control these also. So the childhood absence epilepsy. This is a syndrome which causes absence seizures where there is sudden brief loss of consciousness without loss of postural tone causing the patient to stare into space for seconds, for a few seconds. Now let's have a look into the second type of generalized seizure which is called tonic clonic seizure also called grand mal seizure. This can evolve from any type of focal or generalized seizure. It means any type of focal or generalized seizure can cause tonic clonic seizure. The tonic clonic seizure has two phases. One is the tonic phase, one is the clonic phase. What happens in tonic phase? The muscles of the body suddenly contract causes the person to fall down because when all the muscles of the body contract suddenly there is stiffness due to which the person falls down. There is loss of consciousness and this phase lasts for about 10 to 20 seconds. Clonic phase and clonic phase the muscles then go into rhythmic contractions they alternatively flex and relax causing jerking of the body. So this lasts one to two minutes or less. This very phase. I'm talking about this clonic phase. This lasts one to two minutes or less. Where there are jerky movements of the body. So there is tonic phase where the person falls down because the muscles of the body suddenly contract causing stiffness. And there is clonic phase where there are jerky movements of the body parts. Now, regarding the tonic clonic seizures, they occur alone or as part of a syndrome called juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, where children typically present with jerking movements of the body called myoclonic jerks on awakening from sleep. When children get up from sleep, they experience myoclonic jerks. They experience jerky movements of the body episodically. This is what we call juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Remember in juvenile myoclonic epilepsy there is mainly myoclonic jerks which comes under myoclonic seizure which is a separate type of generalized seizure. We will discuss this type in a few minutes. Now we are talking about the tonic clonic type of generalized seizure which can also occur in this very syndrome. The third type of generalized seizure is tonic seizure or atonic seizure. Tonic seizure or atonic seizure and these causes the person to fall suddenly. So they are called drop attacks. Drop attacks. In tonic seizure, similar to the tonic phase of tonic clonic seizure, sudden muscle contraction occur causing stiffness and falling of patient. In atonic seizure, sudden relaxation of muscles occur, the patient becomes floppy and falls down. So in tonic or atonic seizure, so in tonic and atonic seizures, the person fall down. So they are called drop attacks. They usually occur as part of a syndrome called Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. In this syndrome, there may be tonic seizure, tonic seizures, a tonic seizures, or even myotonic seizures, which we are discussing here. The fourth type of uh, generalized seizures, actually. The Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, there is associated intellectual disability. So, if there are seizures which may be tonic, atonic 
are myotonic, especially there are tonic or atonic seizures. Plus intellectually, intellectual disability. So you should suspect Lennox Gestalt syndrome. And there is a characteristic spike and wave pattern on EEG. This very special, this very characteristic pattern on EEG confirms the diagnosis of Lennox Gestalt syndrome. Now let's talk about the fourth type of generalized seizure which is called myoclonic seizure. It consists of sudden body or limb jerks, sudden jerky movements of the body. It occur mainly as a part of juvenile myoclonic epilepsy which we have discussed in the very and the very second type of generalized seizure called tonic clonic seizure. I told you that in juvenile myoclonic epilepsy there are mainly myoclonic jerks. Don't forget the children getting up from sleep where there are myoclonic jerks. Don't forget those children. Juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. But along with these myoclonic jerks, myoclonic seizures, there may be tonic-clonic seizures also. In the last, we are going to discuss about a separate type of seizure which is called Jacksonian seizure. So what is Jacksonian seizure? This is a type of simple partial seizure when, where there is no loss of consciousness. Simple. Involves one side of the body, left side or right side and progresses in a predictable pattern. What is mean by this? For example, it starts with twitching or tangling sensation of finger and then spreads to entire hand which is known as Jacksonian March. This, this progression in a predictable pattern is known as Jacksonian March. So don't forget the Jacksonian seizure with Jacksonian march, progression in a specific pattern. Now let's talk about status epilepticus. What is meant by status epilepticus? By definition, it is continuous seizure activity for more than five minutes. According to older concepts, they say that continuous seizure activity for more than 30 minutes. But never concept says that it is 5 minutes because it is very dangerous to wait for 30 minutes for a patient to treat actually. So the seizure activity may consist of this 5 minute seizure activity may consist of single seizure or multiple seizures with no or incomplete recovery in between. Status epilepticus is a life threatening emergency condition and you have to treat it immediately what are the problems we can face in status epilepticus? Number one, lactic acidosis because the repetitive contractions of muscles causes lactic acidosis which can cause potassium abnormalities and these potassium abnormalities are shown to cause arrhythmias. So actually the cardiac arrest is an important cause of death in status epilepticus. Number two, cortical laminar necrosis. In status epilepticus, the second concern is about cortical laminar necrosis. What is mean by tort paralysis? This is persistent muscle weakness following a seizure. May last up to hours, especially when it occurs in adults, it can arise concern for a stroke. So don't confuse this tort paralysis with a stroke. Now let's talk about the diagnosis of epilepsy. For idiopathic seizures, diagnosis is made only after the secondary precipitating factors are being ruled out. Like you rule out structural lesions through CT MRI head, you rule out all the metabolic causes by, by using LFTs, RFTs, serum electrolytes, serum glucose etc. 
you rule out all the infectious causes by using CBC, CRP, chest x-ray, serology for syphilis, etc. CSF examination. While for epileptic disorder, diagnosis is made through EEG. Abnormal EEG alone is not diagnostic. As we know, 2 to 18% of population has abnormal EEG. So, clinical features along with EEG findings will make or will confirm the diagnosis of epilepsy. Clinical findings, clinical features along with EEG findings will confirm the diagnosis of a specific epileptic syndrome. EEG actually shows from where the epilepsy is arising, from where the seizures are arising actually. And if ambulatory EEG is needed, this should also be done. This is done in cases like if we suspect an epilepsy and the EEG comes out to be a negative, then we try ambulatory, ambulatory EEG. I am sorry, I have done here a spelling mistake. This is ambulatory EEG. So ambulatory EEG, if needed, should be done. This concludes our today's topic. Now, in today's video, we discussed in details how to differentiate actually between seizure and epilepsy, how to differentiate seizure from syncope, we discuss different types of seizure, the partial seizure, generalized seizure. We discuss different types of generalized seizures along with the different epileptic syndromes. We discussed about status epilepticus. We discussed about TOTS paralysis and we discussed about diagnosis of epilepsy. For the treatment section, I'm making another video because the video has already been gone very lengthy. So thank you for watching. If you have any question, comment it down.